everybody. If you've watched this far into the video, you'll have heard three demonstrations of the same Mueller excerpt on three similar, supposedly, but fundamentally different horns. First, the trumpet, second, the cornet, and finally, the flugelhorn. What we're going to do in this discussion segment is discuss each one of these three horns, how they sound in relation to the others, and you know what those differences mean for the excerpt and the music as a whole. So if you want to hear about that, make sure to stick around. So starting on the left here, we have my Yamaha 8310Z B-flat trumpet. This is my pride and joy. It's my main axe. I've been playing on it for six years now, so quite a long time. This horn and I have connected a lot over those six years. And what the trumpet generally, and this is certainly no exception, sounds like is it's very bright and directional and pointed. You know, you play the trumpet, the sound shoots out the bell straight out in front of you, pretty much. There's a little bit of spread in the sound, but it's really mostly a projection sort of deal. And what that means for orchestral players, where that is somewhat counter to what they're supposed to be doing, is that they have to actively put in the effort to blend a little bit with the instruments around them. And there are a couple of ways trumpet players do that. First, as an orchestral player, you are just expected to be able to blow in a fashion like this, rather than, you know, just shooting air down your instrument, to yield a slightly broader and warmer sound. Now, another way you can do this is, of course, the mouthpiece choice, and I am using a Bach 1.5A, which is a fairly dark and, you know, it's, it's a deep and wide mouthpiece for things like orchestral playing, to be conducive to that darker tone. Now, there's a, a certain caution you have to exercise as a trumpet player not to sound dark, but rather to sound warm or broad. The reason I like words like that more is because dark, the opposite of bright, implies sort of a lack of overtones, whereas the trumpet naturally likes to project with a lot of higher overtones in the sound. So that is why we tend to avoid the word dark as a trumpet player, at least in the more, in the, in the orchestral side of things, the more advanced players don't like to play too dark on their sound. And in general, the trumpet will sound the brightest of these three pretty much no matter what you're, what you're doing. If you're approaching the instrument efficiently in the way it wants to be approached, it is naturally going to ride on the brighter side of things. Next up, we have the cornet. I personally do not have the most outstanding specimen of a cornet. This is a John Packer JP071 that I acquired for less than 10% of what one of those Yamahas would cost. It's, you know, it's designed by JP, but made in China, so it's built down to a price. So take the sound quality and the intonation of it with a grain of salt where necessary, but nonetheless, it is a cornet. It takes a traditional cornet mouthpiece. This is a Yamaha 16E, like the trumpet and like the flugelhorn mouthpiece, fairly wide and deep for a darker type of sound. But what you'll notice with these three instruments is that the spectrum from bright to dark is not always a very linear process. The cornet is not necessarily just darker than the trumpet. It is mellower, it is softer, it doesn't project or cut into the audience quite as much as the trumpet. Uh, in fact, for this particular cornet, it's got a fairly small bell throat, you know, just as small if not smaller than the trumpet. So it definitely does not have too much, you know, broadness or breadth in the sound. It's still fairly compact, but it is mellower and it's sort of daintier and softer than the trumpet. You'll notice it doesn't sound like a flugel or anything. We'll discuss the flugel, but that's very broad. The cornet is, you know, I keep using the word dainty. That is the word I'm going to stick to. That is sort of the British convention for cornet tone and playing, and a lot of British players will dress their cornet, cornet sound up with a lot of vibrato. And that is, uh, in, in some ways, an unfortunate habit of mine, is using too much vibrato on this instrument to the point that it becomes a little bit tasteless. But nonetheless, that is sort of the traditional cornet sound concept as we now know it, especially in the UK. So that is what I've done for that excerpt. Again, just to recap, it is a softer, mellower, daintier sound with, in my case, a lot of vibrato, not necessarily a lot of spread. So our final horn of the day is indeed the flugelhorn. This is an Austin Custom Brass Doubler model. Again, fairly cheap and made in China, maybe a third of the cost of that trumpet there. So once again, not built to the same standard necessarily, but nonetheless, a solid example of the flugelhorn sound and what it does. This is the mouthpiece that came with it. It's, it has no markings, but it feels to be about the same diameter as the other two and quite deep as a flugel mouthpiece should be. Flugels use very deep cups and have large bell throats and bell flares, much larger than either of those other two. So the flugelhorn, as I was alluding to in my cornet description, has a much broader sound than either of the other two. It is strictly darker. The cornet was not necessarily a huge amount darker or broader than the trumpet, just a little bit more delicate. This is dark. 
It's rich, it's warm, but it's very dark. Lots of low presence in the sound, not a lot of high overtones, unless you really step on the gas. Um, this Excerpts like this in Mahler symphonies are sometimes played on the rotary flugelhorn rather than the rotary trumpet. Now, I don't have a rotary version of either of these specimens, so I can't do much in that regard, but rotaries tend to be a little bit darker than their piston counterparts, particularly for trumpets. Rotary and piston flugelhorns tend to sound very similar to me, at least. Um, but you'll notice with the flugelhorn, the sound concept really is take over every corner of the room rather than, you know, target the audience. And that's what I like about the flugelhorn is it's much easier to attain a warmth and a breadth throughout the entire recording space. And so you'll notice on the flugelhorn version of this recording, it's, you know, much richer and warmer in my opinion. Is it the perfect sound for this excerpt? Certainly not. The perfect sound is, you know, somewhere in between probably like a German rotary trumpet would traditionally sound like. However, I think it was fun to do this on flugelhorn, and personally it's my favorite out of the three. So having discussed each of these three horns, that is where I'm going to end off this comparison. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and a comment on it. If you want to see more like it, let me know. I'm always happy to do more comparisons of stuff. I've got a few good comparison videos in mind that I'm thinking about making, but first I want to see how much traction this video gets. So with that, I'll see you on the flip side. Thanks for watching.